Hi everybody, Rachel here from RatesTheStamper.com and I wanted to share some new ways of shopping online with you for Stampin' Up. They're introducing something called online exclusives. So if you see here, if you go to StampinUp.com and then you'll go over here, you can choose me as your demonstrator if you don't already have one. And what you're going to do is you're going to tap the online exclusives. Whoops, a little too fast, Rach. Tap the online exclusives and what it will do is it's going to bring something up that anything that is a new online exclusive, which basically means they're going to be bringing out products. I believe it is every other month. So this began in March and they're going to have stuff that's online only. So it'll be new stuff that you can choose. You don't have to wait for a catalog. They do have many, many different things in here. So you can see the Tropical Leaf. I actually got both of these bundles, the Tropical Leaf and the Rhino, Rhino Ready. And we're going to actually use Rhino Ready today to create something. But I wanted to show you another fun thing, the Basics 3D Embossings Folders, which I think is really, really cute. So there's three folders that come in that pack. Um, unfortunately, they are currently on back order, but they will be back in. So they've added these other features here as well. So currently unavailable. We'll tell you that it is coming back. We just don't exactly know when. Usually within, probably I would say like about a two to three week period max. Um, we have a lot of obviously very popular stuff though. We have some gilded designer series paper. There's another really nice bundle. Now the reason this bundle is unavailable is because these little um, gems are on back order. They were wildly popular. But they will also have, they have the kits in there. But something else I want to show you that I actually missed the first time. Let me see if I can zoom out here so I can find it for you but they actually brought back and you can see they I'm hoping paid attention to this they brought back the two inch and the one and three quarter inch circle punch so these will be online exclusives so there may be things that you'll see the catalog and you might think well where did anybody get that from so it's always a great idea to check one here also tells you if things are or are not in stock and they're also really upping their game with the kits. They're all-inclusive kits. They're stamping kits. There's kits that just have um, for a uh, card kit. There's a, uh, what, what do I want to use? Like a board, bulletin board kind of a kit. They have lots of different stuff. A million thanks. Gift tags. Really a lot of fun stuff. So anyway, what I wanted to show you today, and I was again going to focus on this, this is, oh, let me get back to where I was supposed to be. Here it is. Come on, Rachie, Rach, I know you can get there. Well, needless to say, you know where we're going with this. We're going to the Rhino Ready stamp set. So this is the stamp set. It is red rubber, and it also does have coordinating dies, but it also has dies that don't coordinate, so you don't really necessarily need to use it. Now, you may have seen that there was a punch. There are also two dies that kind of coordinate with that as well. So if you wanted to use these or, I'll kind of show you, because this, even though it doesn't really go along with it, this is the Tropical Leaf Bundle. So you have a punch, but they're very similar in style. So you could use all these together if you wanted to. So kind of another step of coordination, which is kind of fun. But what I have done, and again, I'm not going to claim this is my idea, my idea, because I didn't think of it. It's a simple idea, so it's not like it's rocket science. But I was watching Patty Bennett recently, and she was saying how she was having trouble sometimes with keeping her dies and sentiments organized so she knew exactly what she had. So what she's been doing is cutting them all out, stamping all of the sentiments. You can see I got a little crazy with a couple of these, and putting them on a paper. Now what she does is she keeps these with her catalog. Since this one doesn't necessarily have a catalog page with it because it's an online exclusive, what I would probably plan to do is just keep this <clears throat> in my file folder sticking out from that way I have my Rhino Ready stamps or stamps and dies there. But what I did is, and I did this after the fact, so please don't judge my offset stamping here, but this one I actually was able to line up, but what I did is I stamped these after I die cut them. So these parts here you could use as brush or you could layer them together as trees so you have your really thin tree trunks these are uh typical trees that you know that you'll see in i guess what would you even call that on safari in africa i don't know i haven't been to africa and i'm not very uh well versed on cultural knowledge so please excuse my stupidity um, but anyway, you could put these together to make a tree, flip them upside down. I've seen lots of people do different stuff with this. And then you could also use some of these independently. So if you didn't really want to stamp 
the brush you could just die cut this because it will give you like a um a grass look so you could do these as having the bundle or just using the stamps or just using the dies kind of just depends on what it is that you want to do so what i thought we could do today i just recently thought of this idea um i was thinking you know when you want to create maybe you want to create a a sunset background for example and I'm not usually one who does like a slimline card because I typically like my cards to be full length. But I just happen to pull out this piece. I'm not sure what it measures. I feel like it's, yeah, three and a half. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to go with five and a half because I feel like I can trim it. So I have a piece that is three and a half by five and a half. And as a matter of fact, I wonder if this will work because I just made some cards. <laughs> with these, uh, this might just need to be trimmed down a little bit. I think I'm gonna use this. So this is the craft, um, these are a, 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 this is a set of things that is available in the annual catalog. It actually comes with a box, but it's 20 craft note cards and 20 craft envelopes. So since I have this, this will make it easier. I'm gonna use this. That was just totally on the fly. So what I'm gonna do is, put this on the side because we don't need it yet. I'm going to take this piece of Daffodil Delight. I'm going to grab myself a little scrap. And then I'm going to grab a blender brush. And I think I'm going to use some mango and pumpkin. I'm going to say maybe we could use a little bit of Cajun Craze, but I'm not really sure if we're going to need it or not yet. So, uh, you know what? Actually, instead of Cajun Craze, I think I'm going to go with Poppy just for a little bit of a, a red, red color. So I'm gonna begin with just the mango. I don't really know how many of these I'm gonna use, so we'll just see where it goes from there. So I'm gonna open up the mango. And this is more of a red, so I'm just gonna grab an orange if I need to use it. Grab the mango, I'm gonna grab some color on my blending brush. And what I'm trying to do is just kind of create like a sunset look. So I'm just going to start off the paper And the nice part about when you're using your blending brushes, depending on where you come in with your color, you will get a little bit of streaking, but when it ends up drying, for some reason, for me anyway, maybe it's just that I have that kind of eye that I am um, positive when I'm thinking about what I'm doing, that it almost blends in. So you have like these parts that almost could look like striations in the clouds or in the sun or the atmosphere, I guess I want to say. So I have that for the top. So that was mango. Again, we are having a color refresh. We as demonstrators have absolutely no idea, I'm gonna move to pumpkin pie, what colors will or won't be retiring. So if you have a color that you love, I would highly suggest you at least, at minimum, there's a dog hair, get the ink refill for it, get yourself a pack of paper, or if you have a DSP or some sort of an embellishment that you really just absolutely love, definitely try to get your hands on something. And I'm gonna go a little bit darker down here. We have our pumpkin. And I'm going to add a little bit of poppy kind of throughout, and I may actually end up going back and getting that Cajun craze. So I really don't have a card for this, I'm just kind of eyeballing. Just adding a little bit of red in variances, not really in any particular spot. There we go. And I'm gonna pull this out, the Cajun Craze. Anyway, close up the pumpkin. Should have just left it out to begin with. I'm gonna use the orange brush because I am just going to a deeper hue of the same thing. I'm just gonna turn this. And grab a little scrap so I don't put any smudges on this. This probably has not been inked in some time, so it could be a little dry. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little bit of this and do just a drag. And just a little bit of an overblend. Now you can see, depending on what kind of a look you want, if you're blending and you're blending really lightly, you can hold at the end of the brush here. If you really want to apply a lot more color, you can move closer. And if you're really trying to 
push something in. It just really depends on the style of what you want to do with your card. All right, so I feel like that is pretty good there at the bottom. And we're going to add in a little bit of, I think we're going to kind of go for maybe a silhouette -y kind of a look. So we're at the end of the day. We have like that red. And remember, this was on yellow. So it definitely has hints of yellow back there still, but it's definitely more of a, a sunset-esque card. So we're probably going to end up having to trim some of this off one way or the other. I'm thinking I'm going to take a little bit more off the bottom, but just kind of looking at it for now. I'm going to grab my grass and I'm going to grab, this is one of my favorite inks. It is going to take a little bit to dry. That's why I'm stamping this first. I'm going to grab Versafine. It's a black pigment ink. This is not a Stampin' Up! ink, but it's probably one of my favorite inks because it is really great for details. Just want to make sure I, if I'm filling, I kind of fill that I'm getting at least to the bottom here. So this part you can see I missed just a little bit, but again, I remember I said I was gonna trim that off, so it may be okay. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring just a little one more over there. We're gonna maybe do a little die cutting and then put our, um, our Rhino in there as well. And I'm trying to think if I, I think I might just die cut that out with black, just to kind of stick with the same thing, theme. So I'm gonna let this dry. Move this off to the side. I'm going to set this here and then I'm going to just pick a few images. So I'm going to do the larger tree. I'm going to do these two pieces here. So the two tree things. And what I think I'm going to do is black, die cut them black and then kind of piece them together. And then I'm going to piece this trunk underneath of it. But I'm definitely going to put adhesive sheet on this because this is really, really uh, thin pieces here. And the only other thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the rhino. And I feel like what I might do with him is stamp him and then um, color him with my Stampin' Blends. So I'm going to grab the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. That way I can use my blends. I'm going to stamp him so he has time to dry. I do need to die cut him, but I'll die cut the rest of the stuff. Let's see. Fit? Nah, he's not going to fit on there. Let me just grab another little scrappy piece. Do I have any scraps? I have no white scraps here. Wow. Well, I guess that's kind of good. Got my adhesive sheet. And just had a piece. Here we go. This should be good enough for him. Okay. So he needs to be die cut. And then what I'm going to do, I have... Just some black card stuck here. I don't really think I need a lot, but I'm gonna show you what to do in case you've never used this before. You're gonna take, well, it doesn't have to be a lot, but here is our adhesive sheet. We're gonna just take some pieces and we're gonna just put this on. So you figure doing our tree is super important. We have the tree. These things, I mean, obviously we could glue them on if we needed to. So I'm just gonna cut just a little strip. Let's see if we can, whoops. Cut that a little bit sideways. Kind of piece this on a little bit. That's good. I got this little piece hanging off, but let's pull the adhesive off. Okay. So this guy needs to be die cut. And we're going to die cut. So I'm just going to try to remember that most of our stuff is up here at the top. One. Two. Let's see if we can fit that in. It's pro probably pretty good because I feel like the piece that doesn't have it yet is over here. So we're good. So I'm going to put this in and I'm going to die cut this little guy. Okay. And just pop these on. 
kind of the best I can. And then I'm going to just run this whole thing through my Big Shot. All right. And now the only thing we really have to think about is how we want to piece this together. I think I might, and you can see this even came out completely. So I just have the die cut, which is super nice. I think I'm going to die cut this one more time just the smaller piece just in case I need like a little extra part of that tree or the or even the greenery for the bottom okay there we go and then I just need my poker just to get this out okay there we go. So the only thing we're gonna do is just put these couple pieces together. Oops, let me just put these over here so I don't lose anything because these are a little bit smaller of dies. Okay. And I have this part here. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. So if I have, oops, if I have my rhino here, so for example, remember, we are going to need to put a little bit of ground shading under him just for the heck of it. And if I put my tree over here, we can kind of put both of this, like this part, this part, this part. We can even add like a little grassy part in front of him if we wanted to, which actually might work out kind of well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tree and I did not get the whole part of the top of the tree, but since we have the canopy of the branches, I think we should be able to cover it up okay. I'm going to put this here. All right. Oh, you know what? I bet it's because this is uh, still wet with ink. It's just taking a little bit extra. So I might still have to put just a tiny bit of glue. Or if you're doing this uh, after the fact, just make sure you allow time for your ink to dry from your project. Go like that. And it doesn't even have these little kind of gaps in here so it really gives you a more authentic look to your tree kind of gap it up like that a little bit just going to give that a good press okay so we're going to do our rhino i will say fairly i don't want to say quickly because i don't mean that at all but we're not going to do him super fancy i'm going to use a little bit of pool party just to accent the whiteness of his horn. That's about it, just for that. And then I'm gonna go with, I think, some light smoky slate and then some like light and dark gray granite. So I'm just gonna pick a spot, add a little bit. I'm kind of adding to the dark spots first because I know that these little lines here are just kind of indicating a little bit darker of a part where the shadowing would be. So I'm just doing that. Just the lines where anything would add shadow or touching, shading, that kind of thing. I'm gonna go back in, I believe this is the dark gray granite, and just kind of reinforce what I just did there and the bottom of his feet. Belly. And then what we can do is we'll go back in and we'll just blend this out with a lighter color. So it kind of looks a little bit more, I don't want to say visually interesting, but you, you want to make it look almost, if you, if you are practicing your coloring and you're doing a really great job at it, it almost will make this look 3D realistic, if that makes sense. So I'm just light gray granite now just for the rest of the body. I'm probably gonna bring in my dark, um, I don't know if I went with, if I said slate or granite, but the dark of the color that's missing for the toenails and then right around the horn here. Okay, so you do need to allow time for the ink to evaporate, but also with blending these together, 
just layering color. So I have dark smoky slate. That's what I wanted. Just want to grab the bullet tip. This is a darker color for sure. Do his hoof toenails, if you will. And I'm just going to add a little bit more shading here. Shadow underneath where his mouth is. Shadow over here. Making this just darker right here. Where the shadow would be a little bit on the ears. And then he has kind of these like smile wrinkles under his eyes. I'm just adding a little bit to that. All right, and then I'm going to go back in. I believe it is the light gray granite. Is that what I wanted? Yeah, light gray granite. And I'm going to give this just a final blend over at the edges here where these colors are meeting. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Granted, I don't want to get too carried away with it, but once he dries out a little bit, I just want to blend this one spot a little because I have a little bit of a... I find that if I tend to do circles versus like squiggly lines, when it blends through, it dries out a little bit nicer. Where's my light? Light granite. It just blends out just a little bit nicer. That's good. I want to overdo it. All right. So here is our rhino. We're going to put him here. And then, as I said, I had that other... Yeah, I definitely need to put a little bit of glue. I had that other little black piece... And put this kind of like the brush of where he's standing. We could even put him so he's standing kind of in, like he's walking through a little bit of a mud puddle. How about that? And then we're going to just trim this off a little bit. So I want to just put, I want to do just a little bit of doctoring here because since this is damp still from the ink, I just want to put a little bit of, a little bit of, actually, you know what? I'm going to have to pop this because I feel like most of it's stuck. It's definitely sticky, but because the ink is still wet on that. I don't want it to uh, fall off. So unfortunately my use of uh, adhesive sheet didn't really work because I did a lot of ink blending on here and it's still a little damp. So if you're going to do this just make sure you wait. Give yourself a little time to wait. Now one other thing I'm going to do just because you can't just have this little tree here floating with nothing is I'm going to do my um, light basic black stamp and blend and I just want to put just a little bit of a, a shadow not anything crazy I'm not trying to do any but just so it's not just floating there in space if that makes sense okay so just a little bit because there's not going to be that much of a shadow at night but just for something and then mm, see it's going to cover him up so it doesn't even matter it didn't even matter let me bring a little something over here just so there's a little bit of ground Just very gently kind of tapping some color on there. All right, we are going to pop him on a dimensional. And I'm just going to put a couple on the back. One more should be good. And I'm going to put him into the puddle. I'm going to put the puddle down before I put him down. And then we're just going to trim off just the bottom of that card there. And again, I only had adhesive strip on half of this, so I'm gluing anyway. Just gonna put a little bit all over. Okay, we're gonna just decide kind of where we wanted our puddle he was standing in, or whatever, a pile of dirt, moss, whatever it is you wanna call it. Okay. There we go. All right, so we have all of that put together. The only thing we're going to have to do now is we definitely do need to trim because this is, um, again, a note card. So I believe it is five inches. So it kind of depends. Do we want to have a border around it or we just want it to be solid? I think I might take just a, a wee bit of a border. So just maybe a, an eighth of an inch. Okay, so it's five inches. I believe it is three and three quarters. I'm not, no, three and a half. So... 
three and a half. I'm going to do three and three eighths. I'm going to trim off that teeny bit of the tree. And then it was five inches, so I'm going to do four and seven eighths. Ooh, okay. So we're going to have to take a little bit off the bottom because remember, I didn't stamp that fully. And then we're going to go this way four and seven eighths. So it'll just have a very narrow border around there, really, really narrow, which I think is adorable. I might actually save this part since I cut it off and just use that for my sentiment piece. I think I might. Let's see if we can find something that's going to fit. So you definitely, because we did do a lot of inking to this, you want to make sure you definitely put a good amount of glue on here. That might look a little excessive and actually it could end up being a little excessive, but remember craft cardstock is definitely a little bit thicker than all the other types of cardstock we have. So you definitely need something that's going to hold it nice and strongly. So I'm going to just put that for a sec. Let's hold that. And let's see, hmm, what do we have? I wonder if you're stronger than you think will fit on there. Wow, that'll fit on there absolutely perfectly. So while we're waiting for that, I'm gonna grab my VersaFine again. The only thing I'll say is hopefully I can line this up because I only have one little scrap piece of paper and this is it. Otherwise, it's just going on a piece of white. All right, let's see. Try and line that up. I'm gonna keep it to one end so we can kind of trim it. Press and just give that a, oh, did it. What do you know? Now, this ink takes a minute to dry. So I'm going to let that sit there so I don't goof it up. And while I'm wrapping up, I'm going to just tell you that you can get all of these supplies in my online store. So just as I showed you in the beginning there, what you want to do is head there. You can find the online exclusives if there's something you want to get. I'm just going to organize these a little bit while we're waiting for that to dry. There's um, lots of different stuff that you can find in there that again, you will not find in a catalog. So we are basically trying to keep, um, I don't, I don't want to say catalog space because I don't mean to say that, but we are able to offer things in different time publications. So instead of having to wait for a catalog, now you can buy something online, which is, I don't know, I think that's pretty awesome. I think it's probably what everyone else has been able to do and we finally uh, caught the curve on that maybe. I don't know, is that a terrible thing to say? Oh, here's one more thing I forgot to clean. This de definitely does need a little bit of time to dry because it is a pigment-based ink. But I will tell you, I have looked, I have tried many, many, many other inks. You all know this. I am nothing if not honest. I also, um, for a little while, gave Gina Kay's Amalgam ink, but I just don't find that anything gives as nice of detail when you're stamping sentiments or detailed images as VersaFine. It's really, really nice. It's the same people that make um, Memento and Stays On. So same company, we just don't have them to carry it. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put this here. I'm definitely going to put this up on some dimensionals. And I think I'm going to leave it large. And you can see we went back to that Daffodil Delight, which I think was a really nice starter color, also because it was able to give us a kind of a yellow base for what we were working on. I think that's probably enough. You can even see just there, and I don't know if you can or not, but that ink still smudged there just with flipping that over. So definitely is a, a little bit of time commitment to dry this. So make sure you remember that part. I think I'm going to do just a little something. Just a little sideways something something here. Right on there. You know what I think I could use is some kind of a little piece of a ribbon. But I don't know if we have anything that would be accenty enough. Let me take a look while I'm over here. Mm, I feel like a couple of these that I would like to use are probably potentially retired. I know we had that ribbon. Oh, maybe this would work. This is, I'm pretty sure this is a current ribbon. Isn't that sad? I don't even know what is or isn't. The white frayed ribbon. Just need like a little bit of an offset. I think I'm going to use a little bit of this. It doesn't even need to be all that much. Let me just make sure it 
one, so I'll go right here. And with this ribbon, I actually have done this before where I've cut it in half, so I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm going to give it a shot. And then I've saved the other half for something different, but we've done this before with stuff in Card Club as well. And um, it does fray a little bit, which is kind of nice though, because it gives like a little bit of visual interest to it. But if you don't like that kind of thing on your card, you might want to leave it whole. All right, so we have that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down. Then we're going to put this on top of it. So I'm actually going to give this, this will give this another minute. I'm going to just put a, a bead of glue here. Give that a press. Make sure it stays. And then I'm going to pop all of the backs off of these mini dimensionals. Hmm, this one doesn't want to stay. Doesn't like the other one. And this, um, these crumb cake note cards and envelopes they come 20 to a pack in case i didn't mention that 20 cards 20 envelopes so this would be really nice you could make a bunch of these and give these to someone in like a little card pack gift so definitely doesn't need to be just for you but all right and i'm going to crease this one more time because i don't know if i did that when we first started or not and there you have it and then you have a little built-in envelope you could add a little bit of uh dsp to that and i'll show you what i mean so I have a lot of that Dandy Designs DSP. This was the freebie when we had Celebration. And I have this piece here. And I think it's going to look just fabulous. So what I'm going to do is just cut off a little two inch by five and a quarter inch piece. And if you don't like the plaid side, always go with the other side. I don't know what it looks like. Let's take a peek. Eh, it doesn't really go. I'm going to do the plaid because I love plaid. One other thing though I would definitely say. So I've done this prior with um, liquid glue. I'm going to try it with Stampin' Seal Plus just to see. But you want to make sure you get all the way to the edge because you don't want your piece flapping up. That would be my only thing. And then my only other thing is sometimes when you use liquid glue, you kind of have a little bit more maneuverability. So I'm just going to put just a teeny bit in case I were to stick it in the wrong place so I can kind of pick it up still. It's a nice part about liquid glue. Just kind of butt that up. Press. Like so. Grab my scissors and then just trim off the excess, just like so. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but apparently this card is completely boring the dog. And I guess I'm keeping him up during his napping because he's yawning. So then you have a nice little extra added something to your card. So super, super, super cute. If you haven't thought of doing this yet with your dies and stamps, I have thought of it before, I will say that. But I'm just not great sometimes at executing my plans. <laughs> so if you've thought about this, doing this with all your die cuts, because I have done it before, but I've never glued them to something. So I think that's really helpful. That way you see what you have. Maybe if you wanted to find out. This is another really good reason. I'm going to share this with you really quickly. But maybe if you wanted to find out, you know, you were going to add something. We'll just, I'm just going to pick something randomly out of here. You were going to add something to your... Um, sentiment right and you were like hmm what would that look like with this oh fit in there just perfectly and I mean honestly this does look like a mud puddle so you could make a little mud puddle for your um, rhino to run through but this would be perfect for that so it's kind of nice because you can pull your dies out to see if they fit if you wanted to do like stitch rectangles or maybe some of your uh, dies that come along with some of the shapes of course I can't pull any of those out right now I have every single thing other thing out except for that here, here's another one. If you wanted to see if this was going to fit in here, you're like, oh, that's a little tight. 
but that would fit, but you could trim it down. So it's also a great tool if you wanted to see if you could die cut something. So I hope that you have found this useful. I would love if you haven't already to give me a comment here, like, subscribe, follow, share with your friends, all that good stuff basically just helps me to be seen more so I can provide you with some more stuff. So if you have done this idea, this was again, not my idea. Patty shared this. I thought it was a great idea though. So much so that I needed to share it. But if you haven't checked out Patty, She's uh, pattystamps.com, Patty Bennett. She really has a lot of super great ideas. Very easy to list to, has a fabulous laugh. So if you haven't followed her, go on over and see what she's doing as well. She always makes some really cool stuff. But I hope that you enjoyed this card that we created today. This is definitely an original because I just thought of this as we went, which, you know, that's what I like to do, but I just haven't done it in quite some time. So thank you guys so much for stopping in today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks for watching.